Hi, I'm Tommy, and I'm a professional paleontologist. By day, I use the latest data science techniques to reconstruct ecological and evolutionary changes from the fossil record. But by night, I investigate cryptids, the paranormal, mediumship, the occult, politics, history, philosophy, and even God himself. You know, all the things that good little scientists are supposed to avoid. If you want to join me on my journey, friend, be so kind as to like and subscribe, and welcome to Creepy Puppets Presents. Hey folks, so new camera. I hope uh, it looks good. Um, I think it looks great. Uh, and I also got a new chair, uh, which is wonderfully comfortable and also doesn't squeak. So I feel like I'm starting to, you know, make my transition into a, uh, respectable content creator here. So well, I have something of an announcement to make. I've done a moderately popular video, at least for me, on Christopaganism. Uh, but in that video, I shied away from identifying myself as a Christopagan, in part because the term is descriptive of a broad movement, in part because of my hesitancy to identify as any kind of Christian in an online space, and in part because I was in a period of self-reflection. But, you know, that, that period has sort of been very fruitful and is coming to an end, uh, and I've reached some important conclusions. And, you know, one definitely a big advantage of the quarantine is that I could attend religious gatherings remotely that were, you know, too far away because I don't own a car and didn't feel like paying for Uber. So I've been able to attend lots of religious communities that streamed their meetings. And, you know, I've identified as a spiritualist before, but I've always maintained that that identification was descriptive of my worldview and not an affiliation label. But the first thing I decided to check out was an Anglo spiritualist church. I've also checked out friends meetings, Unitarian services, um, and Christian science meetings, which I was already quite a big fan of. Um, but all these services were basically too Protestant for my liking. Um, as someone who is a very strong cultural Catholic, none of them really jived for me on a cultural level. You know, I've been involved with a Rinzai Zen temple for a few years, uh, and that was, you know, a better fit for me due to my henotheistic beliefs. Uh, and I love the high liturgy of Rinzai Zen Buddhism. It appealed to my inner Catholic. But over time, my theological differences with, with Mahayana Buddhism grew more pronounced, as did the cultural differences. Uh, and so the common denominator in the fit of these religious communities seemed to be how much it felt like home, how much it felt like my Catholic culture that I grew up in. But, you know, the mainstream Catholic church is spiritually dead and boring, and I disagree with it theologically on almost everything. However, I recently got a chance to explore the independent Catholic Church and the broader independent sacramental movement. Even though I'm still exploring this community, I'm seriously considering identifying as independent Catholic. The independent Catholic movement actually has a tradition of mediumship and spiritualism within it, which I talked about in my video entitled, What is Spiritualism? Uh, and, you know, the independent Catholic Church has been broadly supportive of syncretic uh, folk Catholicism, things like voodoo and Santa Morte veneration and other indigenous traditions, which is something I care very much about. And the independent sacramental movement is a lot more orthopractic. There's an emphasis on traditional Christian practice and a tolerance for a wide variety of theological diversity. There's also the added benefit that, you know, I believe at least, belief is a political act. So by engaging in the practice of a faith that ethnic Irish people have been historically persecuted for, both here in the US and back in Ireland, my embracing of independent Catholic tradition is an act of decolonization for me. You know, I hate this atheist talking point of, oh, you return to the faith of your youth. It's like, yeah, religion is an inherently a cultural and communal act. 
like that's why most ancient religions didn't have a name for what their religions were. They're just like, this is what we do. This is part of our culture. It's inseparable. Anyway, so having found a religious community identity that seemed to fit, and one that was decidedly Christian, I have decided to embrace the term Christopagan for myself. And because that term is so broad and means many different things to many different people, I'm going to be specific about what I mean by Christopagan. I am a Christian polytheist. I believe that many gods exist. I believe this because I've had verified personal experience. That is, you know, I've had mediumistic experiences of these gods. There are finite paranormal beings of what was traditionally referred to as a celestial quality. And, and I, as I said before, I don't believe in the supernatural exists by definition. There's this nature that we don't understand yet, hence I use the term paranormal. And so that's the, the, the experience part. And, you know, what I've experienced is broadly consistent with the experience, both historically and by other mediums and visionaries. This is the verified part of verified personal experience. You know, we also know that privileged perceivers, that is a subsection of the population that sees the world more accurately than the whole, is not only predicted by evolution, but we know that it's existed historically. And we can detectably distinguish it from, say, someone who's delusional. I've done a whole video on that, actually. Uh, so the naturalistic explanation for our experience is that we're actually experiencing a higher level of reality. Think of the first organisms to evolve the ability to see how much their world differed from what the other organisms around them in their population were like. I'm also a metaphysical idealist. I think mind is the fundamental bedrock of reality because idealism is more parsimonious than any other metaphysical account. And I recognize that a reality creating mind is a fair definition for God, something like the Brahman in Hinduism or the Adi Buddha or the Poimandres of Hermeticism or the Ein Sof or Elyon of the Kabbalah. Uh, and because I acknowledge this aspect of deity, and I made a whole video about it, uh, and how it led me from atheism, uh, I would say this also makes me a Hina theist. So that's the polytheism part of Christian polytheism. For the Christian part, I believe that Jesus was one of these gods, and uh, specifically a spirit representing divine order, the Logos, which exists in many mythologies. And I'm inclined toward a possessionist Christology, that this God possessed the man, Yeshua bar Yusuf, at his baptism, as described in Mark chapter 1. I believe that Yahweh, Elohim, Satan, the Holy Spirit, and the Lady Wisdom from Proverbs, these are separate gods and goddesses too. And I further believe that we can identify these gods as specific deities from the ancient Near East, and I'll talk about that more in part 4. You know, just for now, like this is the mainstream consensus among secular scholars that the Jews believed in many gods of Semitic, Egyptian, and Sumerian origin who over time got syncretized and downgraded until they ended up with just one god. Now, I tend to think that the New Testament is mostly bullshit, especially everything St. Paul said. But after seven years as a practicing medium, the Old Testament is the most accurate description of the spirit world I've ever come across. More accurate than Buddhism's descriptions, which was part of my disagreement with Mahayana Buddhism. And so the Old Testament, the Tanakh, has earned my respect as a reliable guide to spiritual truth, even if it isn't necessarily a reliable guide to history or morality. And because of the respect I have for the Tanakh, I'm inclined to believe its claims about the divine son of man from Daniel 7 and the book of Enoch. And Yeshua fits the bill of this celestial messiah. Like, just about every point I say here could be a theological video essay on its own. But just to quickly sum up the short version, there are many gods which are manifestation of one divine mind. And one of these gods is mucking around as... Jesus 2,000 years ago, whether through incarnation or, as I believe, possession. So, 
Addressing the elephant in the room here, my beliefs are very similar to what Latter-day Saints or Mormons believe. And I acknowledge that. Most Mormons are Christian polytheists in that they believe the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are separate deities among infinitely many other deities. I would embrace any Mormon who chooses to adopt the Christo-Pagan label. In fact, I agree with most of what Mormons believe. I believe that salvation means apotheosis. I believe the Bible teaches good works are necessary, but not sufficient, for justification or the remission of sins. I believe the Bible teaches collective sin and collective redemption. I support temple worship. I believe it is possible for the dead to be saved. As long as the spirit and the soul have not yet parted company, I reject eternal hell. And as I've mentioned elsewhere, I believe in free love, so I'm cool with polygamy. And I've read the Book of Mormon, even though I don't own a physical copy, I have it on ebook. Um, if there's uh, any Mormon missionaries out there watching and you want to send me a physical copy, or you know, just get in touch, uh, you can contact me at the email posted in the description. While I don't believe its events are literal history, I do accept the Book of Mormon as a compelling story with a core of mystical spiritual truth. And while I don't believe in the continued existence of prophets after Jesus, I do believe in the continued existence of the gifts of the prophets. So while I don't believe Joseph Smith was a prophet, I believe he had prophetic visions. Also, Joseph Smith was an occultist in his early life. I know some Mormons would prefer to uh, suppress that fact, but he was. And I probably think that that's how he knew what was up with the spirit world. So I agree with like 95% of what Mormons believe, but most of the problems I have with Mormonism stem specifically from the behavior of the church. And none of the Mormon denominations agree with me completely. Also, again, Mormons are way too culturally Protestant. I wouldn't mind some kind of what I would call like an open temple society for the study of Latter-day Saints theology and religion without having to be compelled to join it or subscribe to the authority of a particular church. But look, if you are a Mormon watching this video, uh, even though we might not completely agree, I I'd like to ask you to subscribe because I plan to do more apologetics for Christian polytheism in the future, and you may find that useful to your own faith journey. Also, uh, please stick around for the epilogue of this video. So I believe the gods of Christianity can be clearly identified with specific deities from the ancient Near East, primarily from Semitic and Sumerian mythology, but to a lesser extent the Egyptian gods and Indo-European deities, uh, primarily via the Hittites. Elohim the father is the Sumerian An and the Semitic El, while Yahweh is Enki or Yah as he was called in Babylon, uh, who was historically syncretized with Egyptian gods like Hnum and Ta. And Jesus is Enlil in Sumerian, or Hadad in Semitic cultures, or uh, Shu, the god, Egyptian god Shu in Egypt. Lady Wisdom, whom I believe is the same being as the Holy Spirit, was the Semitic goddess Anath, you know, Semitic Athena, the goddess of war and wisdom. Satan is Nergal. No, not that one. Yes, that one. Enlil was the first offspring of heaven and earth both the primordial heaven and earth, and the god and goddess of those things, An and Ki respectively. Son of heaven and earth in Sumerian is Anunnaki. No, not the aliens. Uh, I recently bought Digital Hammurabi's ebook on the Sumerian language and I'm trying to learn it. So in this regard, I'm also something of a Sumerian and Semitic reconstructionist. In communication with the Anunnakene, the Sumerian versions are much more aggressive and primal than the Semitic versions. Like definitely the same beings, but just more wild aspects. If the Canaanite gods are blues, the Sumerian gods are like thrash metal. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this video, but I will definitely be increasing my Christopagan and polytheist content in the future. And since we've talked about Mormonism so much, I'm going to attempt to channel the angel Moroni. So if that's not what you're into, please like and subscribe, and have a nice day. Valiatis amici. For everybody else, 
let's have a channeling. So I'm going to start by, I've got my pen and paper, Moroni. I don't have a sigil for Moroni. Uh, maybe that sort of horn shaped logo. I don't know. But I'm definitely going into trance now. Hey folks, editing Tommy here. You can tell that because I have my doors closed and my hair is done up in a different style. It's tied back. So I'm not entirely sure how much of this conversation between me and Moroni uh, necessarily was intelligible. I was in a fairly deep state of trance when this occurred. Um, what I will tell you is that it was not what I was expecting. Uh, Moroni is a very powerful war angel, crusading angel, um, just barrel of Martian force. And uh, so as he's channeling through me, you'll notice that my voice starts to grate. Uh, and I asked him, you know, hey, do you have any Chthonian aspects? Are you in any way demonic? And he, he gets offended by that. Like, no, no, I'm not Chthonic at all. I'm not, which means, you know, I'm not demonic. Um, the other thing is, he identifies himself as one of the Satans. Now, in the Old Testament, the Satans are a genetic or a generic term for a group of angels that basically do unsavory things. They lie and manipulate people, but ultimately for the ends of God. And I believe, so when I asked him about Joseph Smith's role as a prophet, I believe Moroni is implying that, to a certain extent at least, uh, Joseph Smith was being used or manipulated by, by the angels through the power of Moroni. Um, so then I asked him uh, if he could... Uh, bestow upon me the uh, Melchizedek priesthood without having to go through the Mormon church. After all, he'd been responsible for bestowing it on Joseph Smith and he touches my head and I get all this warm and tingly feelings that last for a few seconds and it's done. And it's like, that's it. You're, you're done. You're ordained. I've given you all that power. Uh, now go and spread. I've got crusading to do. And when I said spread gospels and orders, that means like chivalric orders. So I hope that provides a little bit of context to what you're about to hear. Moroni, 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 Moroni. I'm here. You have a surprisingly deep voice. I belong to the Satanim, to the host, host of Mars, the celestial warriors. Moroni. Tell me, how was your uh, relationship with Joseph Smith? How did that work? Smith was a vessel for the will of heaven. Anyone, saint or sinner, may serve as a vessel ah. 
for the will of heaven. So was his teaching accurate? Not accurate. by the teachings of the sniveling historians. But true as seen through the Eyes of heaven. I am not Chthonian. Not Chthonian. I am in heaven's war. I am heaven's war. One day, we will conquer. Convert lest ye be against the will of the Lord. Okay, Moroni. How can we receive the Melchizedek priesthood independent of the Mormon church? That's easy. It's a gift of the spirit. I lay it upon you, upon you, and anyone else with the balls to ask. I feel tingly in my head. He's like touching me. There you go. There you go. You have, you are an ordained Melchizedek. Priest spread gospels and orders in the name of heaven. Yeah, he wants to end the session. Okay, thank you, O oh, great warrior of heaven. Depart we now as brothers in the Lord. Yeah, yeah, I've got other stuff to do. 
far by. Oh boy, that was a wild ride. So, I mean, I, I was aware that uh, Moroni was a warrior angel, but like that is definitely some serious Martian energy. It wasn't demonic, but it was definitely aligned with the Martian channel. And for those familiar with astrological magic, you know that the Martian channel is definitely where demons dwell. Um, so look, like like that is a serious angel of of fight and destruction there, and definitely very, very liminal. You know, uh, just as the, the angel of death stands between heaven and earth, and as in the Book of Job, Satan goes between heaven and earth. Like that is that second heaven liminality that that's where this angel lives but he's he definitely you know kicks ass for the lord anyway so uh if that's all for this episode um uh of the science medium show and uh take care once more take care everybody and have a nice day